Challenges come from came from different angles. It came from the fact that acceptance was the first challenge. The family accepting the fact that her yeah, beloved Safayati wants to dance her instead of you know being a doctor, a lawyer, or you know the stereotypical success tag uh, career. And uh, the second one was also creating uh, an identity for myself with that. It's one thing to be challenging that people are not accepting dance as something that is seen as serious for a young, a youth, not talk of a young woman, even a double minor. Then you now have a situation of how do I actually apply what I know as being who I want to be and be celebrated for it as a dancer. That was another challenge I had to, you know, face and overcome. Then after the identification came where people now saw that, okay, this girl is to be done and this dance thing seems to be something that is going somewhere. What opportunities are there? Is there a market? Is there a demand? Is it going to ever become a business? Is it just going to be a girl that we know that is popular, she can dance and we hail her on the streets? Or is it going to be a career that's another challenge? I have to look for means and ways to make sure that me being a dancer is just not a tag like you just giving a trophy to an athlete to one race but see it as something that can sustain uh, life especially when I become when I get to get married and have children and all that uh, right now I'm all of those things I, I've been identified I've been accepted I now have a family and I have a career there's a company and other lives are now involved in it and other lives are also going to benefit from it so that's how far I've come this cut up body so no blame me if I misbehave and losing control, losing control, losing control. And no matter how I go, this girl we are the sea. She's bringing up those fantasies in me. With the way she's whining, whining, hey. The dance industry in Nigeria has grown. It has grown beyond just a popularity stunts now. It's grown beyond what people consider a career that is just for amusement and uh, entertainment of people that feel like I can't be the one dancing so there's people that dance, let me hire them and they dance. Now that I've, been, I've started understanding that this is real. It's sustainable, It can be. there's enough security in it to even um, retire as a dancer. But um, we are still struggling with uh, how much of the orientation that is still needed for dancers to understand that the business ethics of the trade and the art are two different things. It's one thing to be an artist, not nothing to be a businessman. So understanding the business side of things is we are still getting there. We are taking baby steps, but we are getting there. But it has been established that the dance industry is a part and parcel of of the entertainment industry. You don't see music videos without I don't think any music video would be fun without an element of dance or movement or choreography. Even where the artist does not use dancers, he would need somebody to coordinate him on how to look at the camera and be on set or how to act on set. And it's very, very important in the life on the life of an artist that will actually step on stage to perform to a live audience on how to coordinate himself and give, give himself um, the right image to portray to his fans. How does he do that? He doesn't wake up in the morning and doesn't know how to do that. Usher doesn't wake up in the morning and just know how to do I'm so caught up. Somebody taught him. Who is that person? It's a dancer. So when you look at the word dance, it's categorized into so many, so many sub-levels, subdivisions, layers and layers of different kind of creative mind and geniuses. So I'm a dancer, but I'm also a choreographer. I'm a director. Yes, I'm a fitness trainer. Yet at the same time, I, I'm in production. I do creative writing, script writing, presentation, treatments, all of that. So for the industry, it is grown beyond just a person moving the body. That's what I'll tell you. And it has become, it has, it is married into the system of music. It's Nigeria music, Nigeria flavor, Nigeria vibe. I don't think it's any of these are songs that have become popular today that have not tried to come up with a dance style for it just to engage with the audience continuously. And I think from our society, we in the African world, dance is part of our culture. 
You know, that has been imbibed in us. I don't see anybody that doesn't like to dance. You might not all want to be dancers, but it's part of who we are. Can imagine? Uh, and between dancers and video vixens is just job description because I'm a, I'm a dancer I can decide to be a vixen in a video and not dance and a vixen can decide to dance in a video and not be a vixen but the difference is the reason why I said job description is some people decide to just be vixens as the pretty girls pretty faces that you see in a music video and some people just want to be dancers because if they are not actively moving in a music video that's not their call. So it's just two different job descriptions that can be um, done by the same person. You understand? So that's the difference. <laughs> I can't remember, but the, the thing, contrary to a lot of people's belief, I have not appeared in as many videos as a lot of girls do these days. In fact, I'm so shocked I see some of our, you know, new breed dancers. Some of them can do like 50 videos in a week. I don't understand how that happens. In my time, it's one video and that video is big enough to, to help my career for the entire year. You understand? I would say I've done a handful. I've done a lot. I've done the, the most important ones, the ones that matter, the ones that allowed you to know me today. You understand? And I'm still doing more that matter. Like I just did one with um, El Prince, is a brother of mine, a very beautiful um, musician. It, the name of the video is Jealous You. I've been, I've been dabbling into directing, co-directing as well. So I'm behind the camera and in front of the camera a lot these days. So it's not all about the popular artists for me right now. I'm also trying to help a lot of the upcoming and the grassroots artists to get onto the top. When it comes to the, my archive of videos, I think the ones that matter to my career are the ones that I have done. And more are still coming. The grace of God. I think there's so much in me that I'm still going to be used for. There's so much in me that I want to give. It's not enough. Even the dancing, I don't feel I'm where I want to be. I don't feel I've danced as much as I want to dance. I feel a bit caged by some of the environment I find myself in or even the dance industry itself, where it is at at the moment and where we want to go with it and our limitations with um, amenities, uh, funding and support. You know, it's one thing to have the talents and I think to get support that allows the talent to flourish. And all of this um, is made possible by God. The fact that I can think of an idea and bring it out, like when I did the Ijoda Dance Burnout DVD, I started doing dance fitness when nobody thought of dance as an avenue to use to make a living as a fitness trainer. And since then, I've been pushing that idea on, on the dance DVD, on the dance workout DVD. And it came about, but it took a lot of time. It took years for me to be able to achieve the amount of money that I would need to actually pull you know, that off. So those are the things that still hold us back a little bit. The funds to do as much as is in its head. But putting all those pieces together, connecting it, is for me, it's one major string. And that's love. Love for everything. Love for my family. Love for my career. Love for the passion of wanting to give back to humanity. And that's the only thing that makes me want to continue. <laughs> Personally, 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 I rock your body. I promise you go home, you won't tell daddy. I give it to you like you never had it. Screaming, touching, chill, like speaking Chinese. <laughs> 
because it's normal. It's a natural thing to do. You're supposed to engage yourself in physical exercise even while you're pregnant. Unfortunately for us, there's this um, whole idea in the African community that once a woman is pregnant, she's treated like an egg, locked up in a place. Don't move. Don't jump. Don't talk. It's, I think it's it's just a um, lack of uh, education on what is and the fear of what we do not know that our own African community creates a shield over without explanation. They just say, ah, pregnant woman does not cross over a knife. Why? How does the knife on the floor just make, the, so the baby will go with the woman. I don't know, you know, things like that, very funny myths like that. So um, the, the human body is made to it's, it's made to adapt to different things, especially how your lifestyle is. My lifestyle is a fit. I'm a fitness trainer. I'm already fit. Being pregnant is not a disease or a condition that will require me to be disabled. It, I'm just carrying a new life form. My body is changing towards that life form. It doesn't mean that my lifestyle has to change in terms of the healthy things I do. And working out is one of the healthy things I do. And it has actually, actually affected my children because now they are very agile fit and strong if you are pregnant and you have children and you're not doing anything during your pregnancy check that child out compared to the child that when you're active you had you see there's two two different kind of scenarios even the environment your, your children start to absorb from you from inside the womb they understand the environment from inside the womb so the environment is just always down quiet whatever they'll react to noise differently my kids can sleep through a rock concert because during pregnancy they're always around loud music so you can imagine the science of that not the talk of not working out so for me it's normal Personally, professionally, I see what you're doing intentionally. Get me one bit physically, so give it to me, give it to me radically, emotionally, psychologically. You're turning me on biologically. So I need to give you plenty of things dance, work out, run, swim when I can. I'm always dancing, that's one thing. I'm always stretching, I'm always trying, I'm always uh, developing new form of workout program or strength program or endurance program because another thing you need to understand is that when you have a passion for something this physical every time you grow and you're growing older your body is changing to adapt to that age at that time so you want it to continue to meet up and not let you down that's why you can be 70 year old and you can still be working in a construction fa factory do you understand what i'm saying it's not because the 70 year old man just stayed for one place and say i'm 70 let me carry shovel it's because he's been doing it all his life so he can take it, so I need to keep up. A lot. First of all, we're trying to create a structure. Second of all, we're trying to make sure that we build enough opportunities, platforms, and expand the horizon and scope of dance business well enough to create a fortune 500 uh, 4500 industry that means that dancers can earn like your artists earn they can be signed like your artists are signed you understand they can they can develop themselves they can be celebrated they can win awards too just because they were appeared in the music video you understand they can do music they can be in movies they can be the brands and the stars of today you know just the way it is they can be signed and endorsed like every other dancer is abroad nike signs dancers sony signs dancers so in Nigeria, we also need to develop ourselves to understand that this is a legitimate business. So we have to think like businessmen men and women. So getting us there are things that I'm doing. That's the reason why I even developed an app recently. I realized that everybody wants Cafe to come and teach them in their house. I cannot be in 200 million homes at the same time. Everybody believes that I should know the best teacher or the best dancer that they can use for their videos or they want to use to teach in their schools or whatever. So I decided to create an environment, a community online that you that don't know anybody, don't know any dancer, can go in the community called Ijoda and find your dancer there, find your teacher there, find your vixen there. So this community is me helping other people also expand their business. These are one of the steps that I'm taking to encourage people. So dancers can also load their profile on there on the app 
and get jobs, you know, just just like that. So another thing we're doing also is that we just been approved by um, CAC, uh, the Dance uh, Association, that we have the Dance Artists and Choreographers Association of Nigeria that I just formed with a couple of very good friends or colleagues of mine who believe that we need to be structured. So the, the um, association is coming up, platforms are coming up, a lot of content to prove and show that dancers are relevant and can make, you know, monetize their talents are also coming up. So a lot of that is going on. Yo, everybody, thank you for having me. It's your girl, K to the A to the double F Y. And I've, I have been your personality of the week on my Dizzy TV.